Welcome back to the channel. Wanted to give you guys an update on how my reloading was going for my SIG Cross. Um, as you can see, if you've seen in the other videos, I retorqued this barrel. And so this barrel removes just like an AR barrel. Up under here there's a, there's a um, castle nut kind of deal. And I retorqued it. I, I went with a different torque than spec. Um, I went 10 pounds higher, so if you have one, you know what the spec is. But I went 10 pounds higher. Um, I'm going to put that over here because it's irrelevant to this video now. So, I wanted to give you an update because my last, my last shot or outing for shot groups and stuff was, was pretty dismal. Um, I think my best group was, you know, mid ones, almost two inches. So, I, I retorqued the barrel. I redid some loads. I, I got some new bullets, things like that. So, I wanted to give you guys an update on that. So my first shot group, obviously we're going to jump right into it, <clears throat> excuse me. My first shot group was the initial loads that I had previously, the horrible groups. And once again, four inch group, it was horrible. And so that's not the bullet combination that I need to be using right now. And so from there, I went to um, the same bullet with a different charge and shot that for a group and I shot, that was a... Uh, 178 book to hollow point from Hornady with a 45 grain charge at one inch, one point, almost 1.1. It was just under, so it was basically MOA. Um, the the shot group that was bad, that was a 2.845 length cartridge. The other one was a 2.81, and so 45 grains shot just at, basically at an inch. All right. So from there, I went to. The SST bullet from Hornady, great hunting bullet, um, a little bit lighter because it's 150 grains. And so I'm going to have all my data right here in front of me, and so I'll be looking down a little bit. P apologize for that. So the 45 grain SST from Hornady shot a 1.008 inch group with an average of 2697 feet per second, an extreme spread of 28, and a standard deviation of 12. Not too bad. I'm pretty okay with that. Um, I haven't fine-tuned this, this is the first loads out of this. We continue with the SST at 45.5 grains at 1.8 inches, so I won't be using that. That was 27.23 feet per second, 33 extreme spread, and 13 standard deviation. So won't be using that load. And then you're going to see this before I show this. Um, you're going to see some of these targets have bullet holes on top and bottom. I, I layer a lot so I can save space on my targets because that was pretty limited. So. 46 grains of IMR 4064 behind a 150 grain SST got me a 2.8 inch, not going to use that, at 2755 feet per second, 37 feet or 37 extreme spread and a standard deviation of 14. Um, so and that was a compressed load so that didn't really do me any good and so for SST I'm going to be sticking with you know for right now moving forward I've got some more load link stuff that I'm doing but basically a one inch group with the SSTs at 45 grains for 2697 feet per second. Not too bad. Um, it doesn't really affect the, the lethal distance of my rifle um, when using a 150 grain bullet for it to be going, what, 50 feet per second fat, slower. So I'm not really upset about that. So the next bullets I got were AMAX. Make sure I got my data here. Okay, AMAX, 44.5 grains, got me a 1.8 inch group at 2620 feet per second. Extreme spread of 14, standard deviation of 5. All right, not my favorite. AMAX at 45, got me a .997 at 2647 feet per second, 15 feet per second, extreme spread, and a 6 feet per second standard deviation. I can deal with that, and I can deal with 1-inch groups out of the SIG cross. It's not, I don't consider this a precision rifle. Some people might, yours might shoot better than mine, great. I bought this for a lightweight, do-everything rifle that is precise, more precise than others, and it's doing just fine for that. So one-inch groups is all you can really ask for sometimes, so you get into customs. So that did that, and then this is another example of two target systems on one. So this was this target I just showed you. All right, so up here I got a little bit of caveat. I hate calling flyers, but I knew for a fact I was developing a flinch at this point. As soon as I touched that trigger, I'm like, oh, that was bad. Like, why did I squeeze that trigger? I was on target, but it was bad. My first four shots went into 0.96, and my fifth shot opened it up to a 1.7. But call it what it is. It's 1.7. Until I prove otherwise, it's a 1.7. I know I called it. 
Again, it's a 1.7. So A max at 45.5 got me 2,661 feet per second. Extreme spread of 50, standard deviation of 18. So not awesome, but I find it 100 to three or 400 yards. That's not as important to have those numbers really small as it is beyond five, 600 yards. My opinion, of course, I'm sure somebody's gonna be on here to tell me how wrong I am, but that's just in my experience. I've shot some of the best groups at distance with the worst extreme spreads, and I'm talking like 90s, and then uh, standard deviations of like 30. But that's just my experience. From there, we went to ELD Match Bullets, 168 grain, which I'm just gonna tell you right now, I love them. They're, they're great, they're super consistent. Um, I did go through and I was measuring bullets, and SSTs are really close. Um, pretty close on weight. When I went to the 168s, they were all within, and I measured 30 of them, um, they were all within 0.3 grains of each other and all within one ten thousandths of an inch of each other. So they were pretty consistent. Um, so I started with 44 grains of ELD match 168. Started off with 25.96. So if you've been watching, you know I'm getting about 2600 out of my 178s. So this is a little slow, however, I started with a 1.25 inch group on that. That's with an extreme spread of 43 and a standard deviation of 17. Not, not horrible, but it's okay. I'm gonna skip the 44.5 for now. As you can imagine, it's probably pretty good because I wanna highlight that. Um, the ELD match with 45 grains of 4064 got me 26.46 feet per second, 21 extreme, extreme spread, standard deviation of eight. I'm not upset about this load. It worked out pretty well. Point of aim, point of impact was, as you can see, better than others. So I was pretty happy with that. And then I went to ELD 45.5 for 2668 feet per second, 22 extreme spread, standard deviation of eight. So that was really similar to the 45 grains. I upped it half a grain and it jumped me 22 feet per second. Basically same extreme spread and standard deviation. So nothing to be really upset about on that. Um, so then I am going to go back to the ELD match at 44.5 grains. It gave me a 2609 feet per second. It's not screaming, but it's a 16 inch barrel, so I think it's doing pretty well. Um, 40 on the extreme spread and 16 on the standard deviation. And before I show you this group, I have not duplicated this yet. Um, I'm big on duplication. If I can't duplicate this, then it doesn't matter. But for right now, I'll take a 0.4 inch group. I'm not mad about that, 0.484, so almost 0.5. You know, there's people that are getting this out of their, their SIGs. Um, I'm starting to get this, and I'm starting to get it broke in. I'm at about 250 rounds now, and I like this. And so I reloaded 100 more of these. Um, I do have uh, some other links to go through on that. I reloaded some more SST, played with some length a little bit, left the powder charge at what it was, but I do have a little bit more playing around to do with this. Maybe my rifle just likes the 168s, and I'm okay with that. If it likes the, the 150s enough to do what it just did, um, which was basically a one inch group for the 45 grains, that's great, I'm gonna hunt with that. I'm gonna hopefully get some deer this year with that. Um, for the Amax, I got basically a one inch group, two charges at one inch group um, at 45 and 45 and a half, if you don't call the flyer, it's 1.7. I'll work on that. Um, and then the 168 ELDM, I got the, the lowest was a 0.457, all the way up to the highest is a 1.29. I'm okay with all of those for honestly distances out to about 500 yards. And then the 178 Boattail Hollow Point, basically a one inch group out of, out of the, let's see here. I'm pretty sure I wrote the feet per second down somewhere. Here it is. 2588, nope, 2591, my apologies, standard deviation of two, extreme spread of three. And I hope I can find the picture. I took a picture of it because it was on the back cardboard backer. That was the second shot group I fired and it was a one inch group basically. And so if I've got that picture, I'll drop it in right here. But a standard deviation of two, extreme spread of three. That is not because I'm a really good reloader. I think that's because I got lucky. And that's okay, I'll take luck. All day. <laughs> so I wanted to give you guys that update. We'll let you know I am still working on reloads. I, I enjoy reloading, I enjoy the, the chase. 
And honestly, even though I found some good groups, I'm still gonna chase it. I'm still gonna find new bullets to shoot. I'm still gonna find different bullets to shoot. I'm gonna find different reasons to try different seating depths and all that good stuff. Um, I've been tracking down more information. I wanna get smarter about some of this stuff. I've been diving deep into some of the, the reloading forums for you know F-Class and things like this, like how important is trim length and things like that. You know, some people say it's not as important as you, you might think. And so I've been, I've been diving deep on some of that stuff and I forgot to get, do a video and get it out to you guys. So here it is. And I will have this out to you shortly, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I got a lot of stuff going on. But um, hey guys, if you guys have any questions about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, like, hey, that's dumb. Why are you doing that? Please drop it in the comments. I try to respond to everything as long as you're not attacking me. If you're attacking me, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm probably not even going to delete it because I like to let people see how shitty other people are sometimes. Whatever. If you got a genuine question or a genuine concern or critique, I take critique like very well. You know, I've been told a lot of times in my life I'm not doing something right. Tell me, it's cool. And, uh, and uh, if I find that it's useful and helpful and, and a, a good part of the conversation, then we'll incorporate it. It's not a problem. And so with that, um, I've got some more reloads coming soon. I am probably going to be about two weeks before I get out to a week before I get out to the range again. And so hopefully I have an update and I'll do shorter videos on those. So apologize. These are so long I'm trying to keep them under 10, but I talk too much because I keep talking anyways, stay tactical.